Welcome back to Jimmy DeVille's Garage and episode 12 of the Barn Fine Fergie project. In this episode, something completely different because diesel injection pumps are in a stratosphere of their own and ours was in a very sorry state. I sent it off to special guest Theo from Practical Classics who is a black belt in all things diesel to see what he could do with it. Here we go. What would we think without a brain? And could we love without a heart? Those are questions I'm not here to answer. But one thing I do know, our old diesel engine will never run without an injection pump. Will it ever pump again? So while Jimmy and Gav have been up to their elbows in the bowels of the engine, I think there's going to be the brain, the heart, the soul of the engine in this box in the shape of the injection equipment. So let's have a quick look and see what we've got. Can I just say very nicely packaged Jimmy, very safe, right, oh smells good. If you're watching this in smelly vision, scratch panel A of your scratch and sniff guide in order to enjoy the full aroma of broken diesel equipment. Oh, it does smell nice. Oh, bonus injectors. And what's this? Comes complete with a, hmm, comes complete with a t-shirt. Well, oh yes, yeah, so there it is. Uh, this is a CAV BPE injection pump and probably more green than CAV intended and more oxidization. Uh, doesn't appear to turn. Some of the levers move. Probably time to go for a cup of tea I suppose but I think we should have a look inside. Oh the joy of a sharp screwdriver. There we go, apply some newton meters of torque to that. Will we be lucky on this one as well? Here's hoping. Uh, if you make a grunting noise, you are far, far stronger. And I did make a big grunting noise, uh, clenched my buttocks, and uh, I managed to unscrew this screw. So, who wants to see what's inside? Oh, this could be exciting. <gasps> Ooh. <laughs> yeah. It's to be expected. So, four pumping elements, each element for one of the engine cylinders. The rack or control rod goes at the back and these quadrants should move freely from side to side but it does look like it's all rather seized up. Unfortunately diesel fuel is hygroscopic so it absorbs water and that really doesn't help things either. Right, because we know we're going to have to get quite involved in this injection pump we're going to need to know some detail. Thankfully the TEF20 tractor is quite well known and if we can't get any specific information then I'm sure we can just cross reference it to other ones. So I'm just using a stainless steel toothbrush uh, for people who suffer from serious plaque problems to uh, just clean this plate slightly and you can see actually there's some detail coming up. So. Fingers crossed. May not be able to catch it on camera, but there is some information here. So we've got enough to know what kind of pump it is. Um, so we can order some parts, which is good. I think the next best thing is to spray 
penetrating oil on into everything and then just wait for a while and in the meantime I'll make a plate for the front. So, <clears throat> left it a few days now to pickle in some penetrating oil, I've given it a squirt every time I've walked past, so hopefully the injection pump will be in slightly more relaxed mood for its removal and stripping. Uh, so while I've been waiting for that to happen, uh, I have replaced the Mark 1 in Holden 8 and 9000 with the Mark 2 version and we know this is Mark 2 because it's written on there. So it's not as ideal but I will bolt that onto there and that will allow me to clamp the whole thing in the vise. Like I say not perfect really but I think it will be okay. Beautiful. Okay, so the plate is bolted to the pump and we can now clamp the plate in the vise. Like that. We'll give its nuts a quick tweak so it doesn't move around. Like that. Doesn't have to be an awful lot. And the plan is this. We're going to shake hands with science and we're going to try and make the aluminium expand more than the mild steel so we can get these holders out. However, there should be fuel in here. There are two large felt filters. Try saying that without your teeth in. Um, there could be fuel in there still and I don't really want to be at the epicentre of a small red mushroom that comes up from the south coast. I suspect all there is in here is dead spiders, mange and a buffet of disappointments. However, to be on the safe side, rather take this cover off first before applying heat to the top. So here we go. Grunting didn't work, what's the next plan? Here's the plan. A sacrificial metric nut placed over the screw we want to undo and then fill that with weld. Hopefully the heat from the weld will make the aluminium expand more than the steel if it obeys the laws of physics and we also have a larger area to unscrew. Hopefully that works. Fingers crossed. That's them both undone. I guess it's time to see what's inside. Nylon face, aluminium cover. So, oh, first time this has been opened in many a year, I suspect. <laughs> yeah okay so many people think that aluminium doesn't corrode but it does and this is a lot of aluminium oxide in here uh, basically just corrosion bit of steel corrosion there uh, so we need to kind of dig around in here this should be perfectly clean as any diesel injection person will know, perfectly clean, uh, but it's not. So we're gonna have a little poke around in there with one of these and a bit of that. Uh, I'm gonna put on a respirator because I don't fancy breathing this stuff. So let's have a go. Respirator on. And see what we've got. Hmm. Ooh. Okay, let's try, oh dear, that doesn't matter, we can always replace uh, clips, but look at this, it is actually coming out. Now with the circlips off, hopefully 
we can coax these filters out. Look at this. So this is a retainer for the secondary fuel filter. So we shall put that carefully in a tray. I don't think this is going to go again, Jimmy. Sorry, I think we may have to replace this. Now then, I do believe there's another one of those filter filter holders at the back of this. Now what kind of condition that's in, I don't really know. These are held down by the posts, which I can now see. Uh, and I am now reminded of that. So let's see if these are really tight. And if they are, I shall use a deep quarter width socket. Um, this is um, a whip, whip, well, it has whip width fastenings, uh, British standard fastenings, so um, because of its age. So, quarter width spanner, let's just have a try. Oh, and we're in luck. We'll be, be in luck with the second one. So, let's try that. Just don't want to put too much lateral pressure on it, but I don't know. Oh! Oh, oh, right, okay, so, ah, we are in luck. Ooh. That'll clean up. And there's that. I'll be honest, I have got a bit carried away and I haven't tidied up as I've gone along, so I shall do it now. So, some of the powdered injection pump is in here and I should put some other parts in here. Now, these are specialist trays, and as such, they are quite expensive. So they range from between two pounds to six pounds each. Um, although that said, it's not so bad when you think that uh, one of these actually came with a special fried rice, and this one here came with a lamb biryani. So it all works out quite well, really. So we should put these bits in here just to keep them in order and we are not cleaning them yet we'll go through and assess them later on look at that Marie Kondo eat your heart out early on there was a plan I think it may have been a who knows and that is to apply some science to the top here and make the aluminium expand more than the steel and thereby allowing us to get these holders out the uh, delivery valve holders so slightly worried about the fuel in there but there is none so let's have a go so the idea is warm this up aluminium expands about twice as much as steel does so we don't have to go mad and we'll give it a go we'll uh, Normally I use a T-bar like this with a 12-point socket but I think this count calls for one of these really. So six-point socket. Now I'm slightly worried because we're just bearing upon the front flange of the pump which I don't really like. So if this is really really tight then I think we're going to have to stop and I'm going to have to think of a different arrangement for holding the injection pump. Right, let's give it a go. Let's see. See where we're at. So like I said, this is a six point socket. It's kinder to the hexagons. And again, it's a Whitworth socket. And we're just going to give it a little bit. Oh, it's the whole vice moving. There we go, try that. Oh, right. So that one is undoing. That one was very loose. That one is tight. That one's not too bad. Okay, so this one is still tight. I don't want to go too mad. I'm going to try heating it again. We'll see if we can get it out. If anybody watching this is thinking this really should be undertaken by professionals, you are absolutely right. 
this is the kind of thing that you should take to a specialist and they will do it under laboratory conditions however by the time a buddleia has grown up past it and we've got this kind of corrosion then many specialists won't touch it because it is just so disgusting and we've got nothing to lose and also there's nothing to say that we can't do just as good a job so in here we'll have a spring and there should be a keeper at the top Anyway, so there's the delivery valve holder. Pop that in the tray, and then we've got a spring. And this is the delivery valve itself, which is seized. So the delivery valve shuts the fuel off at the end of injection, and it prevents dribble. Uh, when it goes back down in, it has a it creates a negative pressure in the pipe, so the injectors don't dribble, if you're interested in that kind of thing. So I've just taken the plate off the end of the cold start device and we've just given it some penetrating oil and you can see that it unseized itself which is quite satisfying. Um, we will need to take this apart at some point so I'll just undo that lock nut and undo the screw and we will be able to unscrew the whole unit. And then I think it's time to do, see if we can get the camshaft to rotate. It's going to have to rotate at some point, so uh, we'll see what we can do. Right, here we go then. Okay, so there has to come a point when we try and turn the camshaft. It's not ideal because the camshaft operates against tappets and they're probably very sticky and certainly the plungers are extremely sticky inside the barrels. However, we're going to have to be slightly brutal with it. So if you're of a nervous disposition, look away now. <clears throat> so going to use a, uh, a brass drift and we're just going to tap gently so it doesn't want to go that way uh, but it is going that way so it was quite stiff to go turn one way and then much easier to go back like that in fact almost turn yeah it can turn it by hand so obviously the element elements are being pushed up and they're getting seized or maybe the tappets we have been soaking the pumping elements however so We have given the elements every chance. Right. It's gone round a fair amount. So let's have a look. So in here we can see that a couple of the tappets have come up, so I can tap those back down. There we go. And using the rod, I can see that some of the plungers are up and you can hear as they go down. I suspect number one is not very happy. 
I'm going to continue doing this, just tapping it round gently and spraying it with penetrating oil and hopefully we can free it up a bit. Still need to get these screws out though, still need to take the pumping elements out. I would imagine the pumping elements are not good. Um, one thing to note, now that we've got the cold start off, you can see the end of the control rod or the rack and it's really important not to hit that because the quadrants have got very fine teeth on and it's very easy to damage them. Anyway, I think this is good news. I've just got back from tool station where I've bought some security nuts. The idea of these is that you screw these down onto something you don't want to be stolen and above a certain torque the hexagon of the security nut just shears off. So I have purposely sheared these off in the vise, leaving just the conical part, which I hope to place over the screws in the injection pump we want to take out. I'll then weld down through that conical part onto the screw and hopefully use some pliers or similar to undo the screw, hopefully not damaging the body. Let's give it a go. very tight. In fact it's so tight it's actually snapped the screw. That's very annoying. So there's a bit of remedial work to be done there. Oh dear. If I had to sum up the last 20 minutes in two words it would be oh dear going politely. Uh, of the four screws that were seized only one came out by welding that uh, conical nut on the top and that really didn't want to come out very much and it's not as if the front axle is hanging on these screws it's clearly corrosion that has uh, held them in so i have uh, three heads of screws but sadly the actual screw is now still in the body of the injection pump um, I'm hoping that I can look to see if there's a thread insert and if there is that will dictate the drill size to drill down through to get them out. Um, I do feel slightly vindicated because it means that there would be no way of unscrewing these with just an ordinary screwdriver. So uh, just requires a little bit more engineering and a bit more lateral thinking. There is a way out of this, luckily. I've measured the screw that's come out with some calipers and it's come out at five millimeters not 4.7 which would make it a 2BA screw and I've then checked the thread pitch and it's 0.8 so these are standard M5 screws which means that we can fit a thread insert so that's a thread insert I've just broken the tang off one of them just to see if it fits and it fits really nicely so we can put an insert in here and it will be stronger than the original. So the first thing we have to do is centre punch each of the broken screws absolutely central. So once it's right in the centre we can then drill them out. So we're over at the drill and I've put a 4mm drill in there at the moment so we can hopefully run through the screw just to make sure it's absolutely central before we start going a bit uh, wider uh, and uh, here we go things haven't gone very well again. So we've drilled the screws out here so hopefully the elements will come out. Um, I haven't re-tapped them or thread in, put thread inserts yet because it's not time. Um, I've tried to take the screws off the end of the governor 
uh, by using the, t the usual method. So I've uh, welded uh, a nut to the end of this screw and it came out. I welded a nut to the end of the other screw and it snapped off. Uh, so I'm now going to undo the governor itself and hopefully we can take this off and uh, progress with the disassembly. So these are just some of the screws that came undone, surprisingly. So uh, hopefully the diaphragm and the spring will be in good condition and we can take this out. So here we go. Should have done this one first, of course, but I didn't. And hopefully I can get the housing, the end housing off the governor afterwards after we've done the rest of it but we'll have to have a look the uh, cross shaft in the end of the governor has got a lot of play how much probably a day's ride on a strong horse so there we go uh, and that's the governor spring so that biases the, the rack to the full fuel position and uh, that doesn't look too bad. I would imagine the diaphragm will need changing. But uh, there we go. The governor is off and hopefully we can now continue to uh, take out the camshaft. So this engine has a pneumatic governor. So as you open the throttle so the manifold depression drops and it allows the rack to go across and oh <laughs> yeah this is going to need a new a new diaphragm but uh, there we go so inside here there is a, uh, a fixing that connects the diaphragm to the rack so uh, I shall take that out and hopefully take this housing off Have we go at this housing. Oh, and there we go, you beauty. That could have been horrible, couldn't it? Thankfully it wasn't. So that's the top fixing out. And the bottom fixings are zero BA screws. So they are 10 sorry nuts 10.5 millimeters or thereabouts across the flat so only a zero ba socket will do so we'll take those off he says hopefully All of that was very cack-handed, Mr. Gillum. Very cack-handed indeed. Done like a rank amateur. However, there we go. There is the governor housing off. Now, just necessary to take the camshaft out, although we need to lift the elements up. with some levers first and hopefully we can uh, take the camshaft out. So the first thing to do to get the camshaft out is to lift the elements off the cam, cam lobes like this by sticking some levers in. Push them all the way in. I think the camshaft could be a bit tight and now we need to undo the end of the cam 
shaft and the bearing retainer. Again with a zero BA socket. The long series socket seems to be quite tight. So there we go. And then it will be a question of using a soft faced hammer or something similar just to tap the camshaft out. Take the nuts off. So these spring washers are going to have to be replaced because they have gotten quite flat and they are fairly useless. One more. That one's stuck. Right, let's see. Aha. Uh -huh. There may be movement with the camshaft out. We can think about taking out the elements. So slightly later pumps have these plugs, Welsh plugs, pushed into the bottom. So it's just a question of popping each plug inside. When you buy the new when you buy the new kit it comes with new plugs. So that's what they look like. And it's all pretty filthy and nasty, which is always quite satisfying really. Nothing worse than doing a rebuild on a pump or something and finding it to be like new inside. Far from it on this one. Ew. Really is quite disgusting. Uh, so we take out the levers. Hopefully, the cam followers will come out, which are roller followers. So one of them's already popped out, number three, and that's what the cam follower looks like. So that needs to be kept in order. So we'll put that in the tray marked number three, because these pumps number from the left-hand side of the window. So yeah, that looks pretty disgusting, but we can clean that up and assess it later on. Okay, so we have the camshaft out and we've taken out the cam followers and it's just a question of now taking out the elements and the number two element was fairly free. So that's the one to take out first. And this is incredibly delicate. It's, there we go. So that was the element that is free and easy. So we'll put that in number two. Epic progress, Theo, with the other three elements quickly following suit. So the control sleeves, these here, should just come down, which, <laughs> This is in an ideal world. So 
The control sleeve has a quadrant on there which has teeth that meshes with the rack or the control rod and it's best not to undo the screw here because this will um, lose all adjustment. Uh, it's always a good idea to keep basic adjustment anyway. And what is left here is the barrel which actually is quite loose. So obviously we drilled that screw out quite nicely and there is the barrel. So that is the matched pair to the plunger. And we've got the spill port. You've heard of spill timing. That is the port. Again, absolutely filthy disgusting. Hopefully when we clean this up, the plunger and barrel will go again, but I don't really know. We need to just clean it all up. So I will repeat for the others, although they do seem to be quite disgusting and tight. Okay, time to take stock of what we've got. So, I did indeed have to use a punch to punch three of the uh, barrels out. Only one of them came out in the way that CAV intended, so uh, the control sleeves didn't just slide down as they normally would. Uh, but it, the body's pretty much stripped now. Um, the only thing that I would have to do in the back there's a little lead seal that holds the screw in to the back which retains the rack. I managed to get the rack moving uh, so that screw can come out. And another little thing that I found, which is a bit of an anomaly, in the end I've noticed there's some damage and I'm happy to put my hands up if it was me but I'm pretty sure it wasn't. Um, looks like some piece of metal or something has got stuck in between the uh, coupling and has gone in the back and it's actually bent a stud you can see what's gouged into the aluminium um, I was quite careful to tap around the outside of the, uh, of, the of, of the coupling so I don't think that was me so that could be some foreign object may have got stuck in there shouldn't affect the uh, viability of the pump but it's one of those things. So, it's stripped down. And the big question is, is it viable? Well, everything's repairable, but unfortunately, it may not necessarily be cost effective. So, having cleaned the plungers and barrels up, I found that actually there's quite some discoloration on the plungers and under a microscope you'd probably see very small pits and probably they are not going to go again. Um, so it needs four barrels and plungers or four elements which are about 25, 26 pounds each. Um, it needs a new diaphragm which we saw earlier and probably two of the delivery valves need to be replaced as well. They were um, badly seized. The bearings on the camshaft could do with replacement, although one might go again if we really had to. And there is a rebuild kit, uh, which costs about 60 odd pounds, I think. So that all adds up. Um, there's also some faffing around. We've got to put uh, uh, some heli coils in here and there. We need to replace some of the screws and what have you. Um, but there's also funny things that it makes you wonder whether or not we, it would go again or not. The delivery valve holders, clearly made from stern stuff, um, very low flow but very high pressure. Um, and some of them have been very badly corroded by uh, just being out in the elements all that time. Um, so it could, could it do with some more of these? I don't know. So, Jimmy, back to you really, your decision. Wow. Epic work, Theo. That pump really is in a terrible state, and we're going to have to work out the best direction to go with it next, whether to repair or replace. And that's all going to depend on what's available and how much things are going to cost. But don't worry, we will keep you up to date in a later episode. Sadly, that is the end of this episode. If you've got any comments or questions, please leave them in the comment section down below. And also, don't forget to hit that almighty subscribe button in the sky and also the little bell icon so you'll know the next time we. We release an episode. Until then, happy tractoring and we'll catch you later. Well, I've got a boy from New Orleans. She's got a boy from New Orleans. He's the finest thing you ever did see. Finest thing you ever did see. He's got a long toast drive with a hippity hop. Uh, relax, child.
shoulders. Let me go and cogitate.